Can you please uh, put yourself down and get to that place? Я обычно останавливал, сейчас вами помогу, все нормально. Я сам остановился, сам. Okay, probably we can uh, begin. We're not going to wait anyone else uh, because we are tight on, uh, on time. Uh, once again, uh, my name is Paul, uh, and I'm going to host this session for today. Uh, it is about the uh, application Nimbus, uh, the application for the public transport mostly. Uh, can you please share with me if you have ever tried to use it? Or at least opened it. Okay. Uh, great. So, um, just a couple of words about the application itself. Uh, it was uh, developed for the public transport uh, that is following a certain uh, schedule. So, you have uh, bus stops or just stops for anything. Uh, and then there is a certain schedule that says us uh, uh, a unit should be uh, at that place in a certain time. And we need, we need to stick to that uh, schedule. And we can control uh, it uh, through, the, uh, through the Nibus application and also build the routes. Um, so uh, like in uh, our another application, Logistics, there is also a, a routing tool that allows us to automatically uh, build a route uh, from uh, one point to another or between the stops. Yeah, probably we shall continue. Uh, and. Uh, the concept uh, uh, of working with this application is uh, a bit different from what you have in uh, the main interface in VLON. Uh, I'm sorry, can you please move to here? Thanks. Uh, so it's a bit different, and uh, we do have here in the, uh, in the application uh, such definitions as an administrator. A person who needs to activate something to let uh, other work in this uh, application. So the first time when you log in uh, to that application using your top account uh, access or credentials, uh, you'll probably see uh, another picture, not like here, not the dashboard, but probably you're going to see something like that. Uh, an administrative panel uh, where you can activate uh, the so-called depot for your customers, for your customers' accounts. Uh, it's like a contain container where you store the stops, where you store the routes, uh, where you can create them. So you have an administrator who controls access, let's say, to a depot and who controls access rights for other users, for other customers. 
but uh, that guy cannot uh, create routes, cannot create stops himself, uh, which is in some cases uh, pretty handy. Uh, you are not uh, getting confused. You have one person responsible for access rights or for creation of depots, for activation of, the, of these uh, features, uh, and completely another staff uh, who is um, responsible for uh, creating routes, for controlling routes, uh, for controlling the schedule. Uh, whenever you log in for the first time, this is what you see, and uh, you'll probably uh, see a list of uh, your accounts that are not active yet. It says no depot. What you need to do is to just uh, activate it, and that, that is it. Uh, now you can log in onto that guy uh, and uh, use the, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, dispatcher's interface. Uh, like I'm uh, displaying right now for the new admin <coughs> user. Uh, plus, the administrator can, of course, uh, control the access rights. So we, again, have an, a list of uh, all accounts. Uh, and we can uh, also see users and activate different access rights. They are pretty straightforward. If you want to make that guy an admin and have the administrative features, uh, or to control access rights, then just activate admin. Uh, if you want that guy to uh, create stops, then activate the uh, relevant access rights. So uh, it is pretty much uh, straightforward. You just activate what you see here. Uh, but let's get to the main interface, to, to the dispatcher's interface. Uh, it, yes? Are those the same uh, wire on users or the computer? Yes, they are the same. Uh, we are retrieving the users and the accounts from the from the alarm, from the main uh, from your main account. Uh, so whenever we log in uh, under the dispatcher, uh, we can check uh, the, the dashboard, but it's probably going to be empty for the first time. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is to uh, add stops, uh, and then probably we'll go through other steps. Uh, we will uh, join the stops into routes and uh, create rights and finally control them in real time. So uh, everything is built around basically a stop here. Uh, this is the first thing we need to do. How we can add a, uh, a stop? There was a small uh, bubble window that said, please right click on the map. So we can right click on the map and create a stop using a polygon or, or a circle. And then change it. Uh, or change it like we do in, uh, in the geofences uh, by adding a certain radius. Uh, give it a name. Let's move it to uh, closer to a road, to, a, to an actual road. Uh, and let it be the stop number nine. Uh, you can also add some uh, description for uh, mostly for a dispatcher uh, and decide which type of a stop uh, it is. Uh, if it's used by only buses, then just activate the marker and say, here we have only buses. If it's shared with the, uh, let's probably uh, use trams, then, and then you need to move it closer to the railroad like this. So trams, it's shared by two types of vehicles, different, and we can combine it uh, together in one, uh, in one stop, in one checkpoint, let's say. And then just click save. Done. So now you have uh, a stop number nine, which is shared by buses and uh, trams. And uh, we can also get some kind of useful information right away uh, from the tooltips. Uh, when we hover over uh, a certain stop, we can see that it's not used in routes yet. Uh, it means that it was probably just created and we need to do something with it. It says, this stop is not involved in any uh, routes. Some other, they are involved. And we can see that this stop is already used in one bus route and two tram routes. Uh, the stops can be also imported from a file. Uh, and you can uh, basically export your geofences from VLON and import them here in the Nimbus application. Uh, if you need to find a certain address, you can also do it from the search field. Uh, just input the address and uh, nothing comes to my mind except for the Pritisco, uh, which is the address of our office building. 
Um, and then adjust the, uh, the exact position, position if you need. Uh, I think it's pretty simple, don't you think? So let's proceed to the roots. Uh, once we've added several stops, uh, either manually or through the import feature, uh, we can group them, combine them into a root. Uh, just click create a root and uh, you will be provided with a list of stops. But you can also filter this list. By default, it says uh, only bus stops are shown. I can uh, check if I have any trolley bus stops. N none of them. But I have tramps. Or stops for trap. Uh, so I can select them and combine into a root like this. <coughs> Just click continue. So now I have a root uh, and uh, it is actually shown. Let me probably check with another map. Yeah, it's a bit better. So we can see the root. Uh, it has been uh, built by um, uh, by a routing uh, uh, provider uh, by Nimbus application itself, uh, and we just need to give it a name. Let's say it will be uh, root number fifteen. Is it the same uh, routing in other application like logistics, for instance? Uh, Does it use traffic at uh, distance? Or how does it read We don't need to use here traffic uh, because the route is fixed. It's always the same. Okay. Uh, it's for the public tra transport, okay. so it should not change. Okay. Uh, therefore, there is no need to use uh, traffic. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, as for the uh, providers, what do we have? Google Maps and Google? Only Gurta Maps. Only Gurta Maps. Excuse me. Yes, sure. What if you need to change mm -hmm. the route? Because you know what you automatically calculate or come mm -hmm. up with may not be exactly what how the bus needs to, to go. So what if I need to you know it need to follow a specific road? Yes, so we can uh, change uh, unlike in logistics, we can change it manually. But we just need to zoom in a bit, and then we we'll see the points that you can use. Uh, uh, drag it, just drag it around like this, and change the path. Probably. So you can adjust it. Yes, you can adjust it and okay. go through another road if you need. A question is um, like importing mm -hmm. uh, stops and stuff. I mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. some school systems and. Is there a certain amount of stops that you can download or push on top of this, on top of the map? You, know, and you mean limitations? Yes, limitations. Right. Uh, if there are any limitations on stops, uh, do we have any limitations on number of the stops that are displayed on the map? Yes. No. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any other questions? Not yet. Is it possible yes. to create the route and to decide the stops? Um, sir, can you please repeat your question again? Is it possible to create the route mm -hmm. and then put the stops? Uh, generate a route no, the no, you generate a route based on the stops. But you can uh, add two stops and then create a route yourself if you want. But it's still, uh, we are still controlling uh, the stops. The certain checkpoints that we need to visit at a certain time. This is a must. So we cannot just take uh, a route and then uh, add the uh, stops on that. This is how it was built. We first add stops and then create a route between them automatically. I, uh, are you probably talking about the tool that is available in the tracks? Uh, whenever you build a track for a unit, there is an option to, to also generate the geofence. This is what you're talking about? Yeah. So you use this, use this, this support, and then you 
No, no, we cannot take a, a history track from a unit and then create a root from that, uh, unfortunately. But still, the root itself is built automatically according to the rooting provider. So I, I think uh, it's... It's going to be a way to address the issue that we see with the track anomaly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you simulate automatically the root, and if you have to then come back and try to move in order to if you simulate the root on the spot. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, uh, this is not the root that we address this case with. Then mm -hmm. uh, it's, not better, it's not better, for example, to generate from the history. Mm -hmm. I got the point. The history yeah. of the bus, and then, and then put and stops. I got the point. So generate a uh, uh, root on, on the uh, history track, something like that. But uh, at least we have uh, the business analytics representatives. Uh, it's like a proposal. Thank you. And do you create um, a root, uh, a single root, one by one, or you can, let's say, define 100 stops and then assign five units and then distribute the stops to the, the same like the logistics is doing? No, it's not like logistics. So there you distribute orders. So, and here you build the root first and then assign a unit. So it doesn't work uh, the same way. Therefore, you uh, first add stops, then form the roots, you combine them into roots, and then work with them. But they are fixed all the time, so you need to do it one once uh, and then work with them. This is how it was designed and this is how it works in, uh, for example, in our country. We have fixed bus stops mm. with a certain uh, schedule. Mm. It says a bus should be at 10 a.m. exactly. Mm. Uh, it may be a bit late or a bit uh, earlier, but still it's fixed. But do, you don't do route planning, this is what I'm asking. Just predefined routes. Yes, predefined uh, routes. Bus company has, and mm. you define it on the system. You cannot do planning. So if you mm. have one thousand stops and t ten buses, how do you plan the routes here? Yeah, it's uh, it's not about planning. Uh, once again, it's not like in logistics. You, yes. you just don't take uh, all the stops and say, this is the route, uh, this is the bus, or this is the vehicle yes. that should go through these checkpoints. Okay. No, it's not like this. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, some of the stops are uh, for the uh, route taxi, others for the trams. Trams cannot go through mm -hmm. route taxi uh, okay. stops. Uh, well, I, I think it will part of what is being asked if, uh, you know, Nimbus can be used not just uh, to execute on the existing routes and existing yes. stops, right? Yes. But also design, you know, a route, you know, given some set, uh, set of inputs, right? It could be uh, you know, so many stops that you need to visit and, you know, whether Nimbus can be used during this planning stage exactly. as you deploy the, the public transportation yeah. solution, right? Most public and different companies have planning departments. And so right, so, you know, Nimbus, at this point, the way it is, it uh, presupposes that you already have, you know, a set of routes and stops that you just load in and then you monitor and control it uh, given the tools that Nimbus provides. Okay. So if I create a, a, a set of stops, Mm -hmm. Can I uh, activate those stops based on date? So I have a uh, I have a route that's got mm -hmm. 18, mm -hmm. 18 stops on it, mm -hmm. but every second stop is only active on Tuesday and Thursday. Second stop, okay. So, uh, right. it's so a, what yeah. uh, uh, situation is that there's on uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, mm -hmm. it's an express route. So he only covers major major stops on uh, the Tuesday, Thursday. The same bus will now mm -hmm. stop at every stop. So will it allow that, or do I have to create two routes? Hmm. Right. Okay. Let's see. Okay. No. Uh, the, 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 the bus can stop on the way, but in the other way. So uh, uh, the first uh, scenario was uh, probably, as I understood, uh, about uh, having, uh, let's say, 10 uh, stops in a route. And some of them should be visit on, visited only on certain days, like week weekends, for example. So this is the same route, but uh, the same number of stops. But some of them should be working only on the weekends, yeah. not during the working days. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing. Uh, this is what I heard. Uh, unfortunately, currently there is no such feature, uh, but there is something similar. You can set up patterns, but for the whole route, for the whole 10 stops. 
you can say that it should be active only on the weekends. So you can create two uh, routes. Two routes, yeah. That's two two routes. Uh, one uh, containing all ten stops, uh, and another one is for the weekends that is uh, without a stop that should not be visited. And that won't affect reporting. Uh, it won't be affecting reporting. You will have uh, uh, the same route, the same. The route is like fixed. It's an object of the system that you can use. And inside of it, you can have multiple uh, schedules that are working uh, with certain uh, patterns. So that one, the first one, is working for the working days, for example. Yeah. Uh, and the second one is working on the 7th of September only. And you can create the same for the weekends only. So it's called pattern. Okay. And you may have the same route, uh, but different schedules. But in your case, you're probably going to need to have two separate routes, two different routes. Okay. Because we cannot, within the route, within the schedule, we cannot uh, use uh, yeah, I different we could, patterns. We set it from the time, and if I don't put a time in, uh, in the route, automatically that stop is, uh, is ignored. Because I haven't set a a time on when I've got to visit that particular... No, not like that. Uh, you, you can uh, set up a schedule without timing, so you can skip uh, timing uh, between the... Uh, in, uh, for the intermediate stops. Uh, for the first one, it should be there, and for the last one. But everything else can be skipped. No time can be added. But it doesn't mean that we, are st uh, we stop controlling this checkpoint. We still control. Whenever a unit visits it, we say, uh, this is the time of arrival. Uh, we still control it, so okay. there is no way uh, you can like o override this uh, option. Mm -hmm. so in your scenario, you have to create two routes. Two routes. Two routes. Yes. Okay. But the same, the same stops. Uh, uh, with the same stops or with no other uh, another number of stops, so it depends on on your uh, requirements okay. only. Is okay. it possible yes. to get to know ETA? Uh, when a unit visits a stop and if it is delayed by five minutes, can mm -hmm. the other uh, timing for the other stops can yeah. be displayed five okay. minutes late? Uh, do we have any plans? Okay. Right. Do we have any plans uh, for the... Unit, to, uh, time, uh, but if you are thinking about But today, passenger wants to see your mobile app. You know, my bus is late, so they want to see it real time. So nobody wants to see it at all. Uh, who wants to see it? Passengers? Passengers. Or... Okay. And on the display, they will see it on the library in real life. You will see the app. Uh, what is Kate saying? Uh, I will add in a bit. Uh, a bit uh, yes, it's in Russian, but still. Uh, this is a real screen. Uh, we can that <laughs> yeah, that we had here uh, in our office, uh, so some of the partners sent it to us for the integration. This is a pretty huge screen, uh, and uh, it says uh, top schedule, uh, and then it also shows the uh, root number, 77, for example, or 2T, or 14T, something like this, uh, the final stop, and the estimated time of arrival. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. So final stop is uh, the, the previous stop or? Uh, probably the final stop of this route, something like this. I'm ah, okay, the, the terminal. Uh, the G terminal, G yes, 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 exactly, the terminal. So what product is this? This is a PIS, public information system. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have uh, a lot of details about the integration. Uh, this is just an example. If you have any questions on that integration, you can approach them and ask them after this session. Uh, we'll talk we'll probably with Kay together, uh, we'll discuss that question. But this is a real example, it's already working. Is there a similar display uh, suited for the driver, so that the bus driver can know that they're behind schedule, or 
No, not yet, uh, as far as I know, uh, but probably uh, just a second. Kate, okay. can you please jump in uh, if there are any plans uh, for the same, but for the drivers? Small screen. API. So this is the question. Uh, is, is there a, an API described already for that? Okay, so there is an API that you can use and uh, do uh, and get the similar uh, result using uh, internal uh, display that is installed in, in the driver's cabin. Does it have a mobile app to mm -hmm. see the progress of the route? Uh, what do you mean? Mobile application? Mobile application. Not, not yet. But as far as I know, the work is. But there progress. is a locator type. Of, of yeah, there is a locator, but we're not. It could be used in place of, you know, what the gentleman is asking for. Yes, some of the questions, but let's uh, stick to the to the plan. Uh, we will get to the locator uh, a little bit later. Um, so as far as you can see, I've uh, added a certain number of uh, checkpoints to the uh, to the route, and it was optimized according to the routing provider to the group of maps. Uh, but you can change it manually if you want to uh, zoom in and uh, just drag around these uh, points. Uh, and uh, uh, then you need to add a certain schedule. Uh, and you, create, uh, you can create it uh, using uh, uh, the, uh, mostly uh, something like a template. You can copy from existing schedules. So if you've set up one, and it says that the second stop should be visited uh, at 12.3, uh, for example. Uh, then you can use it as a pattern and just apply, apply, click apply and it uh, will create a new one. Uh, you can even see, you can trace uh, uh, the algorithm. Uh, now it says 13, 23, 33. So it makes the same job. It does the same job, but just copies the first one, the first schedule. So it uh, makes your work faster. Uh, plus here we have uh, some uh, tools like tabbing is working. Uh, you can go upward, downward if you need using the keyboard, which is uh, making you work faster, of course. Um, don't, uh, don't forget about these little things. Uh, they help a lot. Uh, as I already mentioned, there is a possibility to also uh, add a pattern, an operation pattern. Uh, and you can do it when you, create, when you are creating uh, a new schedule. Plus, you can also um, uh, set uh, the uh, option past midnight, which means that the uh, schedule is active today and tomorrow, for example. So it goes overnight. Um, you can, uh, or you need, you actually need to uh, assign a certain unit because the system activates uh, the routes automatically uh, every day. You don't need to open it up and click any buttons to activate it. It does the job automatically, but you need to tell the system which unit to use for that specific route or in this uh, particular case, I have several uh, schedules for that particular schedule. For example, uh, TP logistics apply, done. Then I need to do the same thing for uh, another schedule uh, and so on. But I can do the same thing when I'm creating a schedule, apply. Uh, a unit or uh, select a unit from the list and then click apply apply and you will be creating a new schedule with the same unit uh, and for that unit the system is going to create uh, rights automatically every day so you will see how it's activated um, and that, yeah. uh, if that unit is bound to a to a route mm -hmm. I can swap the unit Yes, you can swap the units. Uh, if you need, uh, you can uh, swap them for the schedule for all the time. Uh, and you just need to go here again and change the unit. Delivery car for apply. Or you can do it on the go. Uh, for now, we'll leave it. And uh, change it uh, for the route that is created. Uh, so we can go here and change the unit. Save, done. So this is a new unit uh, that is working with that uh, right. What so, if I have a pool of units? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean? Uh, Look, I have a I have a bus route, mm -hmm. right? But I have number of buses that are serving this route. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not uh, you know. So mm -hmm. it, it depends on the timing. Let's say at six a.m. is this 
this bus. The next mm -hmm. bus is going to leave at 6.30. Mm -hmm. The first bus is still running. The second mm -hmm. bus is, you know, going through. So I have a pool of buses that is assigned to disrupt the service and disrupt. So mm -hmm. is this not one single unit? Uh, you, if uh, we're talking about uh, several uh, schedules, so I've already mentioned probably it. Well, there's uh, only one schedule. There's only one schedule. So this schedule is, this bus is going to run from point A to point B. But it's still different schedules. Uh, how can you mm -hmm. say that it's the same schedule? You know, you cannot, you know, you have a pool of buses and they depart at a different time. Okay, so, all right, it will be a different schedule. Uh, perhaps it's the wrong term. I have this route, A to B. Mm -hmm. In A to B, I have departing every 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I have a pool of buses that's running this route. Any one of them right. can be assigned. So each route. one of them would have a different schedule, right? If they spaced out by 30 minutes, but you know we, we operate with absolute timing here, right? So for every absolute timing, there would be a certain schedule tied to a particular bus. Is there something to measure? Because I view it from the top first. I have route A to B. In route A to B, I have all these different schedules running every 30 minutes. And we want to try to you know measure the efficiency of this of this route. It's also like the toll rate. Even half an hour gap, you need to define the schedules. So, so each one is a different schedule. You, you don't, well, well, you, you don't explain group. better what you mean by you know manage efficiency, or what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, excuse me, when I ask you to improve your explanation, so you yeah. have you yeah. have a pool of bus mm -hmm. that runs in the same twenty-four hours. Yeah. Okay. And then it may happen that at a certain time you have one of the bus which is uh, between. Uh, Point B and point A, and then you have another one which is just starting from from the point point B. Right? Yeah. Okay. But the thing is that all these bursts, you 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 cannot say in advance that this particular bus will, will, will start at this time and this other particular bus will start at this other time because this is this depends on when the bus arrived on the the pool of bus arrived on the, the but then the question becomes whether you, you want to even control the schedules or if the scheduling is even rele relevant in your situation. If you just go by, you know, whenever arbitrarily the, the buses start and end the route, then, you know, the whole scheduling part is not, maybe not relevant to you. But you have the schedule, so you have a bus with every 30 minutes, like just like, you have, in my case, it's every hour. Okay. Yeah. You have the bus which is needed. But you don't, you, it's difficult to assign a particular bus uh -huh. to, the, to, to, the, to this timing of uh -huh. one every hour, you know? Because, yeah. because uh, uh, the, the, bus, the bus A can start at, uh, at 6 today and tomorrow start at 10. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so, you know, depending on the day, the same, the same bus would be on essentially different schedules based, based on this. Uh, or maybe even a different route. Uh -huh. So a bus can serve more than one route. Yeah, yeah that, that's... <coughs> you, let, you, you can have units assigned to several well, let me for, right? Yes, uh, of course you can uh, have the units assigned to different routes, uh, but let me f uh, first uh, clarify a bit. Uh, as I uh, mentioned in the very beginning, uh, it's about schedule. Uh, and you're talking about the time frame, like uh, the, the interval between the checkpoints. Uh, you have 15 minutes, for example, between uh, checkpoint A and B and, and C and so on. Uh, and we are talking about the fixed schedule. This is what it was designed initially for. Uh, but I think uh, I have a solution for you. We will talk about uh, it after the session, okay? So we'll discuss. It's not bound to Nimbus. We'll talk about it. Ours is more of a route, all right? And the schedule, we say that, you know, it's starting point A. Mm -hmm. uh, the first stop is two minutes after, five minutes. So it's always relative to the start. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a fixed mm -hmm. route. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have stops in between. The stops are relative to the start time. And then we start at, say, on the 30 minute or the hour, every single bus will run. Mm -hmm. And we want to manage and view, you know, the whole reporting and efficiency of that particular, you know, uh, point A to point B route throughout the whole day. Mm -hmm. Well, I will also try to clarify a bit more on that question. 
uh, here we talk about uh, what is the um, uh, condition we use to activate uh, a write or to activate a root, uh, to say it simpler. Uh, we use time. Uh, and uh, you are talking about some other conditions. If it leaves something, if it leaves uh, something at a certain time, then activate the root. And um, I do have a solution for that, so at least uh, you can consider it. But it's not bound to that topic. So we'll stick to the agenda for now, and then we'll uh, we'll discuss it afterward, okay? Uh, great. So any other questions? Okay. Uh, Probably let's proceed. Once I have created uh, a root and uh, I have uh, some of them, like for, for the tramps and for the uh, buses, uh, I can of course activate them. It means that the, that the rights will be uh, automatically created. Uh, we can duplicate the roots and change them a little bit, so it also solves some problems at a certain time. Uh, we can use the filtration, but probably these are some uh, straightforward things. Uh, uh, now we can proceed to the writes before um, we can discuss the blocks. The, yes, the, the, ty the type of roots, is mm -hmm. it fixed in the system or can yes. be defined? For now it's fixed uh, in the system. Uh, root taxis, trams, trolley buses, buses, uh, all of them, and none, with no type. If uh, When you create a stop, you define a type. Uh, can I just rename them? Because this system, I can see, can be used mm -hmm. in other applications, like schools, for instance, but mm -hmm. they don't have the same... Uh, type of uh, roots. So, uh, what what kind of t uh, types you need? Uh, maybe the type of the car, because some schools have some big cars and some have smaller cars, depending on the number. Yeah, so, so it, sh it should be named. Like it should be named trucks, for example. Uh, for example, whatever the name is, but uh, just renaming mm -hmm. the the roots, not changing anything, but just the ability to rename the type of roots or to define it, mm -hmm. not to add it even, but just to rename it if possible. Name types. Okay. Uh, great. Anything else like this? It's not yet here. Definitely, it's yeah. fixed. Uh, so let's uh, jump to the rights. Uh, once we've added uh, stops, group them into roots, and added a schedule, uh, and activated, of course, it. Uh, then the system is going to create rights automatically every day, according to our schedule, uh, and uh, uh, the. Uh, Write uh, is created uh, in 10 minutes before the first checkpoint should be visited. Like here at 12, exactly. In 10 minutes or in 5 minutes. There are only two options. 5 and 10 minutes before the visit of the first checkpoint. So it becomes active and the system starts to control it. it starts to follow the position of a unit on the map. Uh, because we cannot control it uh, all the time, all the day. Uh, if it goes through the checkpoints, then it will be visited. It's not what we want to get here in the application. So is it only the first stop or all the stops? The, the, uh, when the ride becomes active uh, in 5 or 10 minutes before the time of the first checkpoint. So the first checkpoint. First checkpoint. Yes, the first checkpoint. <coughs> and only two options right now. 5 minutes and 10 minutes. And that is it. So it's uh, fixed for now. If you have any other suggestions, please feel free. <laughs> we are listening. Okay. Uh, so we can see that uh, some uh, there are some problems. Uh, the system says that uh, I have an overlapping right. Uh, I actually uh, have some problems uh, here and can clearly see it. But then I hover over this little marker and see what is going on. It says overlapping right. Uh, it is actually overlapping. TP Logistics is trying to go through the same route, number five, uh, using mostly uh, similar uh, schedules. 20 to 40 minutes, 30 to 50. They are overlapping. So it tries to warn me that something is wrong and I need to uh, uh, adjust it, to edit it, maybe change a unit, to select another one, then it's going to overlap. Yeah, okay, so now no problems. Uh, plus, so of course, we can use uh, filtration again here in the same way, uh, according to the types. Uh, and we can uh, switch between uh, the uh, outlays, show the roots, show the units, uh, or group everything by blocks. Uh, not yet blocks, I haven't uh, covered it yet. 
so we just get an overview how many uh, rides are uh, currently active. This is the timeline at the bottom. Uh, these are the schedules. If there are a lot of them, so we'll see uh, a scrolling bar, a horizontal scro scro scrolling bar. Uh, and uh, we can then check the active rights in the real time. Uh, yeah, we can, uh, for example, open uh, some of them and see that the unit is going through, uh, through the route from point one to point two, and it is a bit hurry, 20 minutes ahead of the time. Uh, therefore, it's yellow. If, if it will be late, then it will be red, marked with red, red color. Uh, it is a map, or we can see uh, the uh, progress in the following way. I prefer it more over the map because I can see everything. Okay. Does it show the planned route against the actual? Uh, planned against actual, not, no, no, no such feature. I'd like so to it just this. showing the actual route? Uh, it just shows the actual route because this is what we control, basically. And uh, we control when the unit visits the checkpoints. So if it's on time, if it's too late or too early. So it's not important what route does it take between any two checkpoints? Uh, or is it important that it visits the two checkpoints? Mostly it's not like that because there is a notification that helps you to uh, control if the route goes, uh, if a unit goes over route. Okay. But uh, there is no such feature like in the logistics to compare yes. both. But still there is a notification. If it goes off, then we receive a notification. Uh, here it is presented also between the uh, checkpoints, just uh, to, 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 to get uh, a, a general understanding. Uh, it also warns me that I have some rides in limbo. It means that uh, this unit, they did not show up on the route. So they did not visit any of the checkpoints ever. They should have visited it, but never visited. Therefore, it says rides in limbo, three of them. These are the units and these are the schedules. They basically skipped. Uh, any questions so far? Not yet. Okay, so let's get back to blocks. Uh, blocks is uh, something where we can combine uh, same types of routes uh, and uh, say that this bus first goes through the route number uh, one of the same type. For example, trams. Uh, then goes through the route number two and three in a sequence. One, two, three. And they have different schedule, for example. Maybe it also solves some of your questions. Uh, how we can um, actually create it. Uh, so uh, we just uh, first click on the route that we've added. We need to create them first. Uh, then click on it and create a block. And we can see that I have two, uh, let it be five. Uh, I have two routes of the same type, forward and backward. Uh, for trams, uh, and I can combine. I can say that uh, first uh, it should go through the forward route, and the schedule will be from nine till nine twenty uh, nine. Then it should go to uh, use the backward route, and sorry for <laughs> for an example, but still uh, I need to choose something uh, from uh, twelve ten to till twelve thirty, like this, uh, and it's going to combine it two different routes with two different schedules uh, and you will get a final result, one result. You went through uh, all of these routes, through all these schedules. So it's like a summary of routes. But you can combine different within the same type. So if you have 10 routes for the trams, you can combine them together. I say that one bus or one unit, one vehicle should go through that. Uh, which is also a nice, uh, of course, nice thing. So, uh, now uh, let's get back to the probably online and uh, cover one thing that was mentioned by Sergei. Uh, the locator link, or uh, what we provide currently for the, uh, for, the, for the end users, the ones that are standing at the, the stop. Uh, there is an option to uh, activate a locator link you just click on the plus button and generate link. Basically, this is all you need to do. Uh, and then uh, you can see uh, uh, how a unit passes through the route. You can even see two, uh, two units are uh, on, uh, currently on the map. Uh, and if we need, it should be in English, okay. 
uh, it says roots here uh, and uh, roots here and stops here. We can search by using names of the uh, stops or by names of the roots. So to get the roots for everything. Uh, one you cannot have a link for root number one, for instance, only. Uh, for no root number, okay. Uh, do you have something? Okay, can you please help me? Can we generate the link? Yes, you can. Separately. We can generate the link for a group of roots. A group of roots. Okay, so but can you please guide me on uh, how to create a link right now uh, for a group? Okay. First of all, you should create groups so mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. I have one. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. I just select a group. Okay. So now I have uh, a link for the group of uh, roots number five. That is it. Then the answer is yes, it's possible. But first, you need to create a group. This is what I was missing. Anything else? And just to add to that, on the locator interface is optimized for mobile. So if you open up on the, on the, on the smartphone, it's, it's going to be a, a good, nice view as well. So sort of in place of the mobile app. So how do you communicate that to end users? Uh, some kind of uh, integration to, into uh, maybe a site or something. You have a link that you can embed into your own source. So this, we generate a link right, and you, uh, then you decide. Okay, anything else? You mentioned stop missing notifications. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I have something like this, yeah, stop so skip. So these come only in the Nimbus? These don't go to the Wilder app? Uh, the notifications are here, so it's a self-sufficient application. Uh, it just uses the position, the coordinates from the uh, from the alone, uh, but it has everything you need. Notifications here, reports here. You don't have the same thing in the alone. Can you pick up these notifications via API? Uh, the, uh, the notifications themselves, through the API. Okay, can you please uh, help us again? Uh, can we get uh, notifications through the API? So I have a noti notification that says uh, unit uh, stop skipped. Can I get it through the API? Do you know? Oh, right now? So this is the answer probably. Not not possible. Uh, anything else? Yes. Can you have uh, roots with schedules that span more than one day? If yeah. You, you know. I, I've already mentioned it. Uh, the, the option is uh, called uh, when you create. Oh, where, where, where are my roots? So I need to add something new. Just a second. So when you create a schedule, there is a possibility to also uh, define what is the time past midnight or before. So it's possible. Yeah. If you say it takes you two days to travel from point A to Z. Exactly. This is what I'm talking about. You can start uh, at 12 uh, a.m. of uh, the current day and then finish at uh, 12.33 uh, uh, of the next day if you add the past midnight option. But uh, basically, only two days, as far as I understand, it's possible. So today and the next day. 48-hour spam maximum, right? Yes. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, so uh, <laughs> you, you probably might have noticed that I'm receiving continuously receiving a lot of uh, notifications. Uh, so these are the notifications. Uh, skipping, left a route, uh, or uh, did not show up at the, at the, at the root, basically at the first point. Uh, you can adjust the notification uh, in the user settings. Uh, here they are, right activated, not show up, unit left, stop, uh, skipped. Uh, and you can also define uh, what is considered to be an outrunning or a delay. You can decide it yourself. Two, mi two minutes uh, ahead of the planned time, for example, or five minutes and etc. So it depends on your uh, requirements. 
connection loss, there is also a notification that uh, can uh, tell us that uh, there are no coordinates. The, basically, the unit is, move, uh, is not moving. We do not receive any coordinates from it. Uh, it's, it's called connection loss, and we can also decide ourselves uh, what is considered, uh, what, what period of time is considered to be a connection loss. If there is no data for five minutes, then the notification triggers and we see connection loss. Uh, so it gives only the connection loss notification if it's within a schedule. If, if the unit is outside the schedule... I yes, yes, uh, but we don't need to control it here. It's uh, 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 an application for a specific purpose, designed for a specific purpose. If you want to con control connection loss, go to the notifications. Yes, yes, I understand. That's what I am asking, actually. Mm -hmm. If the unit is outside the schedule, I don't want to receive the notification. Yeah, it, yeah. It, is, uh, it is only wor working uh, within, okay. the, uh, within the schedule once, uh, or uh, basically once a write is activated. Okay. So only then. Um, again, to the user settings uh, a bit more. Uh, so you can also define how the, uh, the unit is presented uh, on the map when you control it in, uh, online. Uh, you can define uh, yourself. So these are two different settings. This one is for, for notifications, hurry and delay. And that one is uh, for the unit marker, how it's presented. It becomes yellow or, gray, uh, or red uh, according to that time. If it's one minute ahead of the time, so it's yellow, you are too hurry. If it's uh, one minute behind the schedule, it becomes red. But you can define it yourself here. Uh, okay, so the operation patterns, I've already mentioned them. Uh, it means that you can uh, let the system know that a certain schedule should be working only during a certain period of time, like on weekends uh, or on holidays. Uh, you basically just pick up a day or you cross the day uh, when it should not work. Uh, you can also make it like this. It should not work on uh, from Monday till Friday, only on Saturday and Sundays. So it becomes a pattern, and you can then apply it toward a schedule. And it will be working only on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So this is a pattern. Uh, do you have any questions about the patterns? Probably no. Okay. Uh, that is uh, mostly it. Uh, if I have missed something, Kate, can you please help me? Probably I've mentioned everything. Did you already cover reports? Re okay, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, the reports, uh, yeah, jumped to the settings straight uh, away. So uh, the reports are available in two formats, uh, basically. Uh, with the grouping enabled, this is the first two lines. Uh, they are always grouped over the details. Like in VLON, uh, when you apply grouping, you just see the, an overview when it started, when it ended. Uh, if you apply uh, detailed, uh, then you can uh, also check the details for each uh, stop within this route. So if you are not using digitalization, you will just get something from the, uh, from the head of this uh, report. But if you are using detailed report, you can get the details. And we can see that uh, in this route, the unit visited only the last checkpoint. And therefore, we got the uh, data. We got the result, uh, beginning and uh, duration uh, spent inside of this area, less than one minute. Uh, average duration from, uh, from a planned time is also shown. And how many stops were visited in the route? Only one out of seven. Uh, so these are the reports. You can export them to Excel file. Uh, you just can uh, execute them uh, once again in two formats. Grouped, the first two lines, uh, and uh, uh, detailed for units, for routes, specifically. And like in VLON, you just need to define the time and select uh, either a route or a unit. Can that report be shown graphically? What do you mean graphically? Okay. Uh, like statistics. Here's the, here's the units, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. say looking at a, uh, at a unit across a set of a route over a number of days. I want to see that uh, that route, and I'll look at variance. 
and run that route graphically. I don't want to look at it as as numbers. Mm -hmm. So uh, something like uh, the pie charts or something like this. How many? Well, it's just a line. It's a line graph showing the same thing, but now I've got them overlaid. So mm -hmm. if I run, uh, say, a month's worth of routes, what mm -hmm. I'm looking at is the spread, the variation along that of those routes. So if they all are exactly the same, the lines will all be over the top of over the top of each other because trying to look at it through a list of numbers mm -hmm. is very, very difficult. Most of the guys want to see a graphical. They want to pull it up, look at the look at the graph and look at the variation around that graph to know if they've got to do something or not do something within that. Or are all the reports text based? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got the point Like a timeline. Okay. Or runs. Timeline. Do you have a timeline for runs already? So something similar to that. And I also want to ask if the bus does not finish its trip, or it deviates from route, or if it skips a checkpoint or a bus stop, would you show the duration of the uh, entire uh, route? Would you show the mileage? Uh, the, if it skips something or this is the example I skipped. Yeah. That brings me to my next question. I'm um, sorry for being so verbose. We have a similar problem with the rounds. When the bus does not reach its final destination, you're not mm -hmm. reporting the mileage. That's a big problem. Or if it's late, or if it skips a checkpoint. We need to see that information, the mileage, or the duration, regardless of whether the bus has been on schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, right now, uh, just to clarify it for everybody, we're discussing the roots module, not Nimbus. Probably we'll cover it uh, after, <coughs> because it's not related to Nimbus. Yeah, but I can already see yeah. it showing it as well. It's not here. It's not the, an the answer is simple, not it. here. You need to show it, because yeah. a controller yeah. might want to see it for another reason. Okay. Uh, now probably this is it. Mentioned notifications, reports, and uh, online and all the other all the other tools. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Uh, so we were pretty uh, fast, and uh, we still have three minutes left. <laughs> okay. So. You probably now can be free if you have any other questions, additional, so you can approach either me or Kate uh, and uh, discuss your questions uh, in person. Thank you for your time and participation.